Hey everyone, we're back with some more condensation polymers. In the last video, we saw how they're formed and the types of monomers that can be used to make a couple of different types of condensation polymers. In this video, we'll start with a real quick recap, then just like we did with addition polymers, we're now going to look at how we can find the repeating units to predict the monomers that a condensation polymer was derived from. Check below the video to see the syllabus dot points we're covering. Condensation polymers form through condensation reactions between monomers that have two functional groups. For example, we could have a dicarboxylic acid and a diol reacting to form a polyester. Or we could have a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine reacting to form a polyamide. In both of these cases, the polymers are made up of two different monomers, so they're known as copolymers. And don't forget, since this is condensation polymerization, whether it's a polyamide, polyester, or polysaccharide being formed, water is always going to be produced as a byproduct. So every time a functional group link is formed, a molecule of water is removed from the original functional groups. In an exam, you might be given a polymer and asked to find the monomers it's derived from. We know how to do this for addition polymers, but it's a little different when it comes to condensation polymers. When we looked at how to predict the monomers of addition polymers, it was pretty simple because they're made up of lots and lots of identical monomers. And since no byproducts are formed, whatever atoms are present in the monomer are also present in the polymer. Unfortunately, we can't really say the same for condensation polymers. That's because we now know that sometimes we'll have a copolymer, or a polymer that's made from two different monomers. And going from individual monomers to polymers isn't quite as simple, since some of the atoms are removed as water. So unlike in addition polymers, the repeating unit and monomers aren't always going to be so similar. Let's see how we can do that now with an example. Here we have nylon, which may sound familiar to you since it's used to make clothes, fishing lines, and guitar strings. Looking at the polymer, we can see here that we've got a few amide groups, so this must be a polyamide. Go check out the previous video on condensation polymers if you need a refresher on the formation of this type of polymer. Let's see what we get if we split these amide groups down the middle, because this is where the original functional groups, which would have been carboxyl and amine groups, join together. Here we've got a group with six carbons and carbonyl groups on the end. Next to that, we've got another six carbons, this time with NH groups at their ends. Then after that, we're back to the group with carbonyls and we can start to see a pattern. And you know what that means? We found the repeating unit. The repeating unit is going to contain all of the atoms from the start to the end of our pattern like this starting at one green section all the way until we reach the start of the next one. So we can now pull this big group of molecules out and stick some brackets and a little n, just like we did with addition polymers, and we get the simplified representation of the polymer. Notice here that on one end of the repeating unit, we've got a CO carbonyl group, and the other end has an NH group. That makes sense, because if we put multiple repeating units side by side and join them up, we get some new amide group links. So this is a good hint. Make sure if you put repeating units side by side, they'll form the polymer you've been given. For example, to check that you've got the right repeating unit for a polyamide, make sure that one end has got the CO group and the other end has the NH group. And if it's a polyester, one end should have the CO group, and the other end should just have a single oxygen. Okay, so moving back to the question. Now we have our repeating unit, but what about our monomer? Or monomers? One way to check if you're dealing with one or two monomers is if the repeating unit also has a functional group link inside it, then it's a copolymer. So you've got two monomers. We can see here that there's an amide group inside the repeating unit, so nylon 66 is definitely a copolymer. In this case, because it's a polyamide, we know this is going to be a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. 
All right, so let's split this down the middle of the amide group again so that now we have these two partial molecules. Remember, since water has been removed, these aren't quite our monomers just yet. We're going to need to add some atoms to complete these molecules. Okay, so we know that out of dicarboxylic acids and diamines, only diamines are going to have nitrogen atoms. So this one must be the diamine, right? Now, what atoms are missing from the amine functional groups here? They each just need one more hydrogen atom bonded to the nitrogen, so let's add that in. Perfect. So now that means that this other molecule must be the dicarboxylic acid. So let's complete the carboxyl groups. It looks like we just need to add a couple of OH groups and there you go. We've got our complete monomers. Here we have hexane dioic acid, a dicarboxylic acid with six carbons in the longest carbon chain. Then over here we have 1,6-hexane diamine. It's a diamine which again has six carbons and amine groups on carbons number one and six. Before we finish, let's put all of this together in an equation and then I promise that's the end of this video. So we start with our monomers that we just found and we don't know exactly how many of these will go into our final polymer, so we'll just put N in front of each. And these will combine to form a polymer or polyamide to be specific which is made up of the repeating unit we found earlier, again with an N outside the brackets. And don't forget that water is produced as a byproduct, so we'll just add that in as well. And there you have it, the overall equation describing the condensation polymerization of nylon 6-6. Let's recap the steps that we went through to find the monomers of a condensation polymer. Start by looking for the linking functional group and split each one down the middle. Look at each section, trying to find a pattern and identify the repeating unit. If the repeating unit has a linking functional group inside it, then it's a copolymer, so you're going to have to split it again to get the two different monomers. Finally, add any missing atoms that were removed as water to get the complete monomer. And we're done! If you follow these steps, you'll be sure to find the monomers of any condensation polymer you come across. See you in the next one!